Hello everyone, my name is Laharia and I'm 10 years old. I study in Chongzheng Primary School and live in Singapore. I'm quite enthusiastic to learn and explore new things. I call myself a YouTubian as I love to share what I have learned through videos. I have participated and won prizes in these competitions. Sony Creative Toy Competition and We Love Our Planet Competition by CDL and NLB. Now, I am participating in the National RoboCup Competition. I hope to win this competition. RCAP Cosplay's Autonomous Driving Challenge is very exciting and interesting challenge for students. The team this year for primary category is Smart Transportation. The challenges include Navigation Challenge, Smart Sensing Challenge, and Path Planning Challenge. Now let's see more about the Navigation Challenge. The Navigation Challenge is to make sure that the robot navigates in the correct path and waypoints by identifying colors or objects and then understanding how to move forward, like human vision. The strategy is to Step 1. Mapping Waypoints are positioned and color-coded to show the locations. Step 2. Positioning The positioning refers to the process of determining the robot's location and orientation in the given map. This is typically achieved through sensor readings with the landmarks or coordinates in the map. Step 3. Navigation. Navigation is done by setting a destination or creating a plan to drive there. We conclude that using different sensors, the robot could be configured to determine its own position and then to plan a path towards the defined goal location. Now, let's see how to use sensors in smart transportation. The robot uses sensors instead of eyes. There are four types of sensors. The RGB sensor. Robots use three types of sensors to sense the color. Each type to detect the intensity of red, green, and blue light. Combining the information from the three sensors, the robot can conclude what the color it sees. Ultrasonic sensor. Ultrasonic sensors work by emitting sound waves at a frequency too high for humans to hear. They then wait for the sound to be reflected back, calculating the distance based on time required. This is similar to how radar measures the time it takes a radio wave to return after hitting an object. IR sensors the IR sensors used to detect objects or obstacles. It gives data on the distance between the robot and the object the sensor is facing. There is a sensor on each side of the robot so that we can detect if there's any obstacles, like walls, near the sides of the robot. Gyro sensor. Gyroscopes measure how fast it is turning. Also called a gyro, they are commonly used for navigation. By tracking how fast and which way a robot is turning, they can determine the direction your robot is facing. Let's see how ultrasonic sensors work in detail. Ultrasonic sensors work by sending out a sound wave at the frequency above the range of human hearing. The transducer of the sensor acts like a microphone to receive and send the ultrasonic sound. Ultrasonic sensors use a single transducer to send a pulse and to receive the echo. The sensor determines the distance to a target by measuring the time lapse between the sending and receiving of the ultrasonic pulse. We use ultrasonic sensors in many ways, 
such as smart home, a door or window sensing, drones, height sensor and obstacle sensor, robotics, tracking of actual location, and automobiles, back sonar, and many more. The challenge is to program your robot to plus waypoints 1, 4, and 7. It should stop at waypoint 9 finally. We need to configure the robot to turn left 90 degrees at marker green 1, turn right 135 degrees at marker green 2, turn left 90 degrees at marker blue 3, and turn right 90 degrees at marker green 4. Singapore being a smart nation, it's very important for us to understand how latest technology works. When I used to go to Tamley's library, I used to wonder how the robot tracks the lines and move around without bumping into any obstacles. After I learned about the sensors, I now understand how the robot works. It uses IR sensors to track the lines which the robot is supposed to follow. And it uses ultrasonic sensors to detect if there's any obstacle in front of it. The Tausar has an interesting feature called Follow Me. It will scan your feet and follow you around. Similar to the robots, we can have smart shoes for the vision impaired. There are already some smart shoes which use ultrasonic sensors to detect the obstacles. We can also include IR sensors. Singapore has the capability to install the reflective part for these IR sensors to detect them and take them where the vision impaired want to go. We can place them at necessary places like MRT stations, signals, and many more. This way, we can make life easier for the vision impaired. Though this is my first time participating in a coding contest, the learning experience was quite engaging as the tool is very interactive and easy to understand. The tool is great for first-time learners as the values for variables such as color coding and wheel speeds, many more, could be set using UI. At home, I have Google Home, Siri, and Bixby in our phones. They are very easy to use as they follow our voice commands. This is what I like about AI tools. I am very grateful to my school who has given me this opportunity to take part in this competition.